Hello, my name is Brett Wilson with Shrink Ray Farms, and with me as always is my ever-present handsome traveling companion, Eric from Accounting. Now, today we'd like to talk to you guys a little bit about snakes. Now, I want to start out with a the local snake around here. I live in Southwest Washington, and our property is absolutely covered with Pacific Northwest garter snakes. Uh, garter snakes are a type of colubrid. Um, there's a lot of super cool things about the snake. One, they're an outstandingly beautiful snake. Uh, but one of the cool things about these guys is they're one of the rare snakes that's actually poisonous. Now, I'm sure some of you guys are saying, hold on there, reptile guy. The word you're looking for is venomous, not poisonous. And actually, in this guy's case, it's actually poisonous. Um, a venomous animal is like a rattlesnake. A rattlesnake is venomous. So if a rattlesnake bites you, you have a bad day. But you can eat a rattlesnake and you're fine. So poison is ingested. Venom is injected. Now, Pacific Northwest garter snakes eat rough scale newts and rough scale newts are poisonous and those poisons those toxins get into the organs of the snake thus making the snake actually poisonous one of the rare snakes that's actually poisonous the only two that i'm familiar with are the japanese grass snake and the pacific northwest garter snake so it's a super rare little treat we have in our yard here in in the pacific northwest now i've got a resident snake i'd like to show you guys this next one is what's called a ball python. These guys are native to West Africa. Now, this is kind of a strange ball python. <clears throat> Normally, ball pythons are brown and black, which gives them this great camouflage to, for hiding in the savannas that they live. But this guy is totally white. Now, you'd be forgiven if you called this guy an albino. He's actually not an albino. He's what's known as leucistic. Now, if this guy was an albino, he would be white, but he would have yellow stripes and bright red eyes. This guy is totally white, and if you look closely enough, you'll notice that he actually has, he's actually got blue eyes. You ever seen a snake with blue eyes before? It's super rare. It does happen in the wild, but it's not very common. Now, the reason that an animal like this would, very unlike, would be unlikely to be born this color in the wild is because they would never survive, or almost probably would never survive. And the reason is, is that snakes need to, to camouflage, they need to hide. When they're younger, they're not only they're hiding from things that like to eat baby snakes, but their entire life they're going to need to hide from their own food. Snakes are what's called ambush predators. And what that means is that they can't run fast enough to catch their food. So they have to wait for their food to come to them. And if you're bright white like this, you're always going to stand out. Someone's always going to, uh, your food's always going to spot you and you're probably going to go hungry. Um, now, most of my animals, we run a rescue here at Shrink Ray Farm, so most of our animals are rehabs or rescues. Um, this is one of the rare exceptions. I actually bought this guy, and I bought him because it's a really great way to show kids the different parts of the snake that are sometimes kind of hard to see because of their camouflage. We'll start with the scales in the back. Now, when you look at these back scales, you can see they're very thick, and they're really hard. These scales serve as armor plating. It helps to protect them from predators, but also from their own food as well. This, the, the rodents that these guys eat, they don't want to be snacks, and so they bite and scratch. And these thick, leathery scales give them a lot of protection from those sharp claws and teeth. Now, if I swing them around, show you the belly scales. Look how long and slender these are. These are called scoots. Now, these help to give traction to the animal as they move their body forward. When a snake is moving forward, they're basically moving one side at a time like this. And those scoots help to give them a little bit of traction. They help to hold on to the ground. And they can move their whole their body with, with pretty much every inch of their, uh, they can move themselves forward with pretty much every inch of their body. And so those long, flat belly scales help them to hold on. Now, the, you can spot a tail on a snake because the tail will always start at the cloaca. Now, most snakes, it's kind of hard to see. But this guy, it's really easy to see. And you can see that the cloaca is right here between these two dots. Now, these are called spurs. Now, obviously, this animal doesn't have legs, but it still has a pelvis, and these, these spurs are bones that are attached to the pelvis, and they extend down on either side of the cloaca. So you can see he's got a short, stubby little tail. But I think the most fascinating thing about the snake is the face. Now, right on the top of the mouth, there are a row of holes. There are special scales called heat pits. Now, those, those scales allow this animal to actually see heat with the scales on their face. If I can get my camera to focus. See those holes right there? They actually allow them to see heat with the scales on their face. So even if this guy was completely blind, he would still be able to find food because his, his scales on his face can actually see body heat. Now, over the years, one of the most common questions I get is, what's the difference between a boa and a python? 
Now there's two major differences, and one of them is kind of fiddly. Um, on pythons, those heat pits, the, those are between the scales on their face. And on a boa, they're in the middle of the scales. I know it's a tiny little detail, but there's one huge difference between the two of them, and that is that uh, pythons lay eggs. <clears throat> So a python mama, what she'll do is she'll lay her eggs in a pile. This is what's called a Burmese python. And she's laid her clutch of eggs in a nice big pile. And what she does is she'll coil her body around those, those eggs and she'll loosen and tighten those coils to try and keep her eggs at a very constant temperature. She wants to keep them uh, at just the right temperature because if she incubates her eggs too warm, she's going to get nothing but males. And if she incubates her eggs too cold, she's going to get nothing but females. She wants it right in the middle. She wants it right between the, right in that special temperature where she's going to get an even mix of male and female eggs. Now, boas, they have a very different way that they go about this. Boas have live babies. Now, it's not quite the same as humans. So humans or all mammals work what's called um, uh, viviparous, live bearing. So snakes are oviparous, and I always think of oviparous, it always kind of reminds me, the O reminds me of an egg, so oviparous, and then vive kind of sounds like live, so, uh, but there's something right between the oviparous and viviparous, and it's ovoviviparous. They're born fully formed inside of uh, an eggshell, so the, the mother boa, python, boa will lay the eggs that, of fully formed babies, and those babies will hatch out of those little kind of Ziploc baggy shells that they're in within just a few minutes. So next up, I've got a boa for you. This is what's called a Colombian red-tailed boa. Now, she's fairly new to us. We've only had her for just a few months. Um, she's about three years old, so she's still got quite a bit of growing that she can do. These guys can get really quite large. Um, we've had one that was up around 80 pounds. So they're pretty, they can be a pretty decent sized snake. Now this animal is what's called a constrictor. That means that it is, uh, it doesn't have any venom. So instead of using venom like a rattlesnake would to kiss their food, instead what these guys do is they grab a hold of their mouth, they wrap it up really tight, they squeeze it till the animal passes out, and then they swallow it whole. Now, how a snake can swallow something so big is because of their jaws. Now, I was always taught when I was younger that snakes can unhinge their jaws, which is not true. Um, so this bone right here is called the mandible. And on humans, that mandible is one piece, whereas in a snake, it's two pieces. So whereas we can only open our mouth down, they can open their mouth down and out, which opens up a really big hole. And if you were to look inside of her mouth, you see something right at the front of her mouth that looks like this. Now it's not her tongue, her tongue is forked. What, is, what it is is called her glottis. Now we have one too, only our glottis, it's the tube that you breathe through. Our glottis ends at the back of our throat so we can choke on things. Her glottis ends at the front of her mouth. So even if she has something that's twice the size of her head, if she can breathe around it, no problem. In fact, snakes can swallow things up to 10 times the size of their head. If you could swallow something as big as a snake, you'd be able to swallow a watermelon. Not just swallowing a watermelon without chewing it. That's what these guys are able to do. Now, a lot of people know that the biggest snake in the world is something called the anaconda, specifically the green anaconda. Green anacondas come from South America. They are absolutely massive and um, kind of ill-tempered too. I've only ever held one and it bit me. Uh, but they are largely aquatic, meaning that they spend most of their time in the water the reason they spend a lot of time in the water is because their bodies are so huge that they have a hard time moving around on land because they're just so darn big. So they, if they're in the water, because they kind of float a little bit, this, their buoyancy allows them to move very quickly through the water, whereas over the, over the, the land, they're not going to move quite as fast. What not a lot of people know is the smallest snake in the world. Uh, this is called the Barbados thread snake. Um, they're super, super cool, tiny little snakes. What these guys are eating mostly is ants and termites. Um, so little tiny things, whereas the anaconda, the thing that they're going to be eating is things like you know, water buffalo and deer and caiman. And, and they will prey on humans as well. So occasionally a golfer gets picked off by one of these guys. All right, folks. Well, that is all we have for you today. Thank you so much for coming by. Uh, there is a lot more fun activities with the Timberland Regional Library. We've got all sorts of fun stuff. Um, 
come on, check the event chat event tab on the website and uh, see what we got going on and join us for some more fun events. And thank you so much for coming by. It's been a wonderful summer and we will see you guys next year. Bye.